There's no doubting what you've achieved on a technical level. There are just certain design choices that were made that we don't fully understand. She can dance. She can sing. She can take song requests. With all due respect, those weren't the design choices we were curious about, Mr. Drew. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's waiting for the day I can do an episode proving that Bendy, our little devil darling, happens to be the same devil ruling over Cuphead's Inkwell Isle where he collects soul contracts, including that of the neighbor from Hello Neighbor. Oh yeah, and he also happened to be created by a guy named Henry, no last name given, just like some animatronics we all know and tolerate. Just saying, I did that all video games are connected theory a few years ago. The indie scene might be getting a bit closer than we all expect. <laughs> Ah, what am I saying? That'd be a half-baked theory. Here, I try to deal in theories that are closer to three-quarter baked. At least. Segue to Bendy Chapter 3. Everyone's favorite ink demon is back, and he's brought with him more fetch quests than you can shake a plunger at. And while sucking inky Botox out of bloated blobs and chasing Looney Tunes rejects around with an ink-spewing Tommy gun was awesome and all, Chapter 3 delivered on what I'd been really waiting for with this game. Story. We got a better idea of why these characters want to escape the ink. Do you know what it's like living in the dark puddles? It's a buzzing, screaming well of voices. Clarity on the hatred-fueled relationship between Bendy and Alice. See those grinning demons? Let's remove them, shall we? And through one incredible easter egg, we got a strong hint that Henry was the original creator of Bendy the cartoon character. On the plus side, I've got a new character I think people are gonna love. We're finally getting enough meat on this theory bone to start gnawing like a hungry Boris. And let me tell ya, there are still plenty of mysteries hidden in these sepia-toned hallways. But as I went through the game's three chapters again to brainstorm for this theory, there was one moment that I had completely forgotten about. One screen so short and so random that it gotten lost in the shuffle, and yet something that is so important that the Meatly decided to put it as one of the first big unexplained moments in the game. So I decided to look deeper into it, try to decipher what it meant, and once I did it started to occur to me that that screen is the linchpin of the entire Bendy story, the place where it all begins, as well as the place where today's theory begins. Way, way back in chapter one, ex-animator Henry receives a letter beckoning him to return to his old workplace, Joey Drew Studios, and he does what any good horror protagonist would do, blindly stumble into an abandoned building with absolutely nothing to protect himself. Once inside, Henry activates the mysterious ink machine and unleashes the horrible ink monsters that plague the rest of his journey down memory lane. The first chapter ends with Henry getting chased by Bendy, falling down a chute, and passing out in a room full of coffins and pentagrams. Family-friendly entertainment with merchandise available at your nearest Hot Topic, ladies and gentlemen. But as Henry loses consciousness, we see three screens. The ink machine, Bendy attacking, and a a third shot of a wheelchair. Now, the first two are pretty self-explanatory, but it's that third one that feels completely random and out of place. The wheelchair. Clearly, it's important to the story of this game because of the way it's placed there, but because we've yet to see any other obvious hints towards it and the length of time between chapter releases, I think most of us had either written it off completely or forgotten about it. But when I started to dig deeper, I came to realize that the clues as to what this had to do with the game's story had been hiding in plain sight sight the whole time. Take a look at Bendy. I mean, take a real good look at Bendy. While I was searching through character entries, researching for this theory on the Bendy wiki, some of the monster's imagery started to jump out at me. The more I looked, the more I started to realize Bendy limps. If you really want proof, look at his chasing animation when you remove the lighting effects from the game. He's got a really strong limp. And it's not just me making this up or cheaply made animations. Look at his character model on the wiki. One leg is perfectly normal, but the other leg is twisted inward. Most of us have overlooked this detail because we're usually running away from Bendy in low light. But when you actually stop and look at him, this element of his design is unmistakable. That wheelchair in that flashback was his. In those three flashes, we're being told a complete story. The ink machine arrives and is used on someone who couldn't walk. Someone who is bound to a wheelchair. Thanks to the ink, that person now walks. And happens to be the personification of the murderous ink demon Bendy, but hey, there's no denying, they walk. 
So that begs the question, who is in that wheelchair? Who is Bendy? Well, I think all us players have been suspecting that it's Joey Drew, and this revelation gives a bunch of evidence to that hypothesis. Not only does Bendy have an inky human hand, but throughout the chapters, we've seen how every other major character from the audio logs has been transformed into an ink monster. In chapter 2, we saw composer Sammy Lawrence long to escape the inky prison of his body. Then in chapter 3, we got confirmation that Susie Campbell, original voice actress for Alice Angel, actually becomes Alice when touched by the ink demon. Even the projectionist Norman Polk becomes, uncreatively enough, the projectionist monster. So really, of the recurring audio log characters, we're only left with the option of two. Either janitor Wally Franks, who's appeared in all three chapters, or the mastermind behind the whole operation, Joey Drew himself. Either one could potentially be Bendy's true identity. And of the two, chapter three all but confirms that Bendy equals Joey. At the beginning of the chapter, if you take the demon path, one of the major differences is that you get access to a tape recording made by Joey. In it, he says, Why, with enough belief, you could even cheat death itself. Now that is a beautiful and positively silly thought. Sure, his fixation on beating death could just be a god complex, but it could also be the fact that he himself is dying. That whatever disease has put him in this wheelchair is slowly eating away at his life, and that through the ink machine he'll be able to beat his impending death. And I'm not just looking for connections where they don't exist, the Chapter 3 trailer reinforces the idea that Bendy the cartoon character is also cheating death. The trailer begins with an incredible short cartoon between Boris and Bendy in a cemetery, but intermixed in these antics is this skeleton who keeps harassing Bendy for no apparent reason. It comes out of nowhere, seemingly at random. So in a game where there are so few characters already and a lot of it is highly symbolic, why is this thing there? Because the skeleton is symbolic of death. Bendy is being threatened by a symbol of death. Notice what leg the skeleton grabs. It's the same one causing the Bendy monster's limp. At the end of the cartoon, Bendy is scared off by the skeleton. He is literally, physically trying to escape from death. But most importantly of all, who wrote and directed this little cartoon? Joey Drew himself. This cartoon, Tombstone Picnic, is him telling his story, living with the fear of impending death, constantly being dragged down by his diseased leg. The ink machine could do what belief couldn't. Becoming one with Bendy saved his life. Which leaves us one final question then. Who is Wally Franks? Well, I guess there's technically two questions. Who is Wally Franks and why aren't you subscribed to this channel yet? Before I go to answer that first question, I challenge you speed demons to hit the sub button and then let me know either Alice or Bendy in the comments before this old timey screen countdown runs out. Three, two, one. Incredible work there, guys. Thank you so much for subscribing, or if you're already subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for putting up with that kind of obnoxious break. I know that these things can be frustrating, but it is, statistically speaking, the single best way for driving new subscribers to a channel at this point, and I'm really eager to get the Theorist community to 90 million subscribers before the end of the year. Wait, did I say 90 million? I meant 9 million, sorry. That was a typo. Though 90 million would be okay, too, but uh, no, let's, let's set our sights at 9 million for now, okay? Anyway, thank Thank you guys so much. Digression over. Now, on to the identity of Wally Franks. At this point, we know the fates of pretty much every other character. So, what happened to Wally the janitor? The guy whose own motto in this game is... I'm out of here. Well, I would bet you that we find out in Chapter 4 that Wally is Boris. Specifically, the perfect Boris that Alice Angel is so eager to get her hands on. And no, it's not only because of process of elimination, though, sure, that helps out in a game with a limited number of characters. No, there's tons of evidence to suggest this. Even though his official title is Janitor, details hidden throughout the game reveal that he's much more like the studio's mechanic. Look here at the Ink Machine blueprints on the wall. Even though they're for Joey Drew, underneath you can see written... Attention Wally Franks. In other words, Wally is the one responsible for handling the installation of this machine. Additionally, in his audio logs, he laments the breaking pipes as though he's the one who's forced to fix them. Can I tell you what? If one more of these pipes burst, I'm out of here. And in chapter one, we learned that Joey had each one of us donate something from our workstation. 
We put them on these little pedestals in the break room. The six items donated are a gear, a bendy doll, Joey Drew's book, an ink jar, a record, and a wrench. Of those, only the gear and wrench make any sort of sense to associate with Wally, and both of those are mechanically oriented. It's not like there's a plunger or a broom or some other stereotypical janitorial item in the mix. The reason why all of this mechanical stuff matters is what we see Boris do in Chapter 3. When the door into the factory gets stuck, Boris knows how to crawl into the vents and open the jam door. There's no gameplay here, so it's a weird thing to just include in the story elements of the game, unless it's meant to tell us something. The act of crawling into the walls and opening a jammed door is something a mechanic working at the studio would be able to do, but that's not all. In a teaser available on Game Jolt, the Meatly included an image of Boris holding a wrench, again pointing to a possible connection with the mechanic of the building, i.e. the one who installed the ink machine in the first place and dedicated their wrench to the sacrifice altar. A AKA Wally Franks. But the final nail in the coffin comes from the Meatly himself, who posted on Twitter shortly after the release of Chapter 2, quote, Why would Wally leave his keys in the trash for 30 years? It's almost as if he never got a chance to go back for them, end quote, alluding to the fact that Wally Franks met with an untimely end. And in this game, we've never actually seen anyone die. They've only become infected with the ink, transforming into ink monsters or ink characters. So unless a new monster is introduced in Chapter 4, which is pretty late in the game's story to be introducing new characters, that leaves us with only one option. Wally Franks is Boris, the one human character whose fate has been left unaccounted for becomes the one cartoon character who we don't know the origins of. So, there you have it, theorists. My predictions as to the major reveals of both Chapter 4 and Chapter 5. Didn't even need to wait three months. In my estimation, Chapter 4 will center around the Boris Wally reveal as we try to rescue our hapless dog from the clutches of the evil Alice. And then Chapter 5 will bring us into the finale, where we confront Bendy and his machine one final time, only to learn that it was Joey Drew all along a victim of his own attempt to cure the life-threatening illness that afflicted him, which honestly would wrap up the story if there weren't one big question mark hanging over all of this. Who is Henry? in these events. Was he just an animator? Just the creator of the characters who would go on to be abused by Joey and his schemes? Or does Henry have some more sinister motives? Alice says that she knows why he's here at the end of chapter 3, but do we know why he's there as the player? His motivations are still really unclear. Perhaps that's a video for another day. In the meantime, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Hey, it's me, Bendy, telling you to subscribe to The Game Theorist for more awesome theories about me and my game. And if you want to see MatPat in a musical number inspired by my incredible ink machine, well, click the box to the right. Or if you missed the first theory on Bendy, then click the box to the left. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to prepare for chapter four. See you next time.